Hey everyone. Should vegans discuss conditions or treatment, or could this be a potential distraction to ending their use? Now up until now, I haven't been nearly as active on my YouTube channel as I would have liked. I share the occasional street interview, and my focus has been sharing um, footage about our animal cousins at Friend Animal Sanctuary. Now recent developments have allowed me to explore things a little bit further, most notably landing in Facebook jail. Facebook jail for 30 days, no heart reacts for me. What will I do with my time in the next 30 days, we'll see. I promise I'll be a better man when I get out. Wait for me. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to do what I think YouTube is probably best for, rant style videos. He was always trying to eat cats. You know, that, was, that was part of the thing, but what's the difference? Why is only eating cats weird? Now this isn't going to be a full on rant, but there are some things I've noticed in the movement that I think leave us some room for improvement. And this isn't meant to target any particular person or um, organization. It's merely meant to um, focus on the strategies we're using and potential alternatives. Now one of the most common things I've observed vegans talking to non-vegans about is the conditions or the um, ways in which other animals are treated when they're being raised um, to be eaten or used in other ways. Now I'll confess I did this when I started advocating for the rights of others. I think it was because the footage that was being used focused around conditions. Now in the last year or so, I've removed that focus on conditions as much as I can, and I've instead replaced that with a focus on how all animals are individuals with their own unique experiences with a valid claim to basic moral rights. Now I think there are a number of benefits from focusing on animals' individuality versus the conditions slash treatment side of things. Probably one of the biggest thing, and I know I found this when I first started advocating for others, is the overwhelming number of stats that are out there. The cages are how big? They do what to kill them? Wait, they do what to female cows to make them pregnant? Ugh. When we focus on other animals' individual unique personalities, the cool thing is we can rely on our own experiences. We don't have to go out and learn a bunch of stats. We can talk about our experience with others at uh, animal sanctuaries, or even if we haven't visited a sanctuary ourselves, we can potentially talk about videos we've seen of um, cows jumping and playing in fields, or perhaps piglets running around in the grass. <laughs> I think the cool thing about this is this has the potential to draw people in versus um, pushing them away. I think we'll also often hear people talk about their 70 billion land animals killed each year and trillions of uh, water animals. I mean, can people even comprehend those kinds of numbers? Why not focus on one unique individual having their rights violated being enough? When I'm having conversations with someone, be it on social media or in person, I like to think of it like I'm standing at the front of a corridor with um, many doors along the way. and So I guess the question is why would we open up one of those doors to talk about conditions or treatment when our goal is to end use and to help others respect others' rights through veganism? Plus, when we're sharing graphic footage or describing things in detail, a lot of vegans are exposed to that too. So why risk negatively impacting the mental health and the trauma that a lot of us vegans face? And while I acknowledge there's a place for graphic footage and those um, details, I don't think this is entirely necessary to build the case for animal rights and potentially can be done in other ways. I plan to go over the potential pros and cons of sharing graphic footage in more detail in a future video. I've encountered a lot of people on the street that they see the graphic footage and they're not that bothered by it. And it's not until we start talking about other animals as individuals and how they're someone and not something that all of a sudden the, their use can, becomes completely unacceptable. Now, one of the big ways we can avoid the distraction of talking about conditions and treatment is through our language. That's why I avoid words such as cruelty or suffering and instead talk about animal use and rights violations. And more specifically, the violation of other animals' um, basic moral rights to be respected and to not be needlessly bred or killed. I've even moved away from talking about how other animals are killed. After all, couldn't this risk sending the message that there's an ethical way to kill them when there isn't? I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Should vegans discuss conditions or treatment, or could this be a potential distraction to ending their use? I'd also like to hear if you enjoy this new video format, and if there's any other topics you'd like me to cover. For instance, I did a whole video about language around a year ago that I thought did well on Facebook, and I'd be happy to do a rehash of that and maybe some of the lessons I've learned since then. I could also do a video sharing some ideas for how I think we can promote veganism through social media or a video about what I think the pros and cons are of sharing graphic footage. 
Do you want to miss out on the next video? I didn't think so. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Why is that going on? to basic moral rights, tense, mm, uh, why does this light keep going off? I completely forgot where it was. All right, um, lumen lights. Uh, fingers crossed the light stays on for longer than 20 seconds. Ah, uh, the wonders of setting up a video studio when you have no idea what you're doing. All right, here we are. Now when we focus on other animals as individuals, we can rely on our own personal... What is with these lights? It's like they're literally... Maybe I just need to ignore it. I mean, the light flickers on and off, who cares. Two second dropout, and we're back rolling. That's a bit much. I'm possibly having a bit too much fun with this. In Facebook jail for 30 days, no heart reacts for me. What will I do my th- I cannot do that. <laughs> in Facebook jail for three days, no heart reacts for me. What will I do with my time? The next 30 days, we'll see. What do you mean, Dexter? You can- Well, good thing I have a dog friend in Facebook jail, okay? Yeah? Yeah, you're gonna help me. Is it camera? Yeah. Thanks for watching and for more resources and support, check out veganinteractions.com and check out Challenge 22 on Facebook for free support to get started with veganism.